They lit two fires, and Jolly made a stew as Polly put Tom and the twins to bed. The cocks scratched and shuffled in their cages, and the goat lay beside them, his head resting on his forelegs like a dog on a rug. Tongo let the oxen out on a long rein to graze, but shortly afterwards they heard lion a mile or two away, and William said he would sit a while with his rifle and pull the oxen in once it had their hour of grass. Mary sat close to the fire even though the night was warm. She felt weary, tired and tiring, but she did not want to sleep. She wanted the night to go away quickly so that it would be day and they could start for home. More than anything now, she wanted that, to see the house, her own furniture, to pick at the weeds between her flowers and smell the wood smoke from her grate. She wanted most of all to sit in her rocking chair on the veranda, look out to the low felt, know at last what it was, after so many years of wandering. Men in army tunics hanging from a scaffold, men in scarlet staining the road red, and a stream that bled a drummer boy dry. The low felt was a hundred nights of gangrene and diarrhoea, and bullets that let in the rain. These were her memories. It was of a young girl, as young as Polly, in a coffin of flowers, and men as old as grandfathers crying like babies on a weary March morning. The low felt was now a tiny copse of dead men's rifles, and sun-bleached horses, and peach trees growing from knapsacks, burning corn, and long queues south and the wandering, wailing widows taking back the fields that had once been theirs. From her mountain top she had always thought of it as a huge green and tan land, stretching its thousands of miles to the seas, changeless and secure. But now she knew the low felt was not one man's land, but of many, all being torn and clawed at by as many separate people, jealous and hating and fearing each other, British and the Boer, black and white, and in such confusion. There was no peace now, nor would there be. South Africa was too large, and the people in it too small to cope. God should never have made countries so big that people lost them.